Hey guys, it's Carthorn back with another TCG player reimbursement invoice video. This time we have 1100 cards with a total product value of $321. I have been shifting my focus back to eBay more because I was looking at my numbers so I can fill out my taxes for 2023. And my eBay sales were higher than my TCG player sales for the year, which isn't surprising because I do sell higher. Oh, and hopefully we didn't get these cards out of order because I do sell higher value stuff on eBay. But I feel like the time I spent on TCG player versus the time I spent on eBay was like 10 times greater or maybe more. So I feel like my dollar per hour on TCG player is just less than eBay. So that means I'm going to be putting more time into eBay and less into TCG player for the remainder of this year. And we'll see how that goes. But I, it means I do need to acquire inventory for, TC, or for eBay specifically because a lot of the stuff I would sell through TCG player, I wouldn't really want to list on eBay. So I need to shift what I'm buying a little bit also and find more plays specifically tailored for eBay. But yeah, I will still be selling a lot through TCG player. I just maybe slightly less time put into it. <clears throat> On eBay, one play I've been doing is literally just marketplace arbitrage. I would just buy like a thousand cards from TCG Player and relist them on eBay and sell them for about two times the price. After fees and shipping, I make a little bit of profit. I've been doing that specifically with, I guess I'll go ahead and tell my play. I don't think people will be able to copy me because I have like the, the sales volume and traction on my listings already, but I've been doing that a lot with 151 reverses. It's done pretty well for me. Especially when you sell one of the reverses that you bought for like 10 cents for a dollar. That feels pretty good. It, it, there's small amounts, but it adds up when you're selling hundreds of cards. Yeah, the 151 reverses are crazy. Have you guys seen the market for that? Like, some of the common and uncommons sell for $1 to $2. That almost never happens with any modern reverse holo card. Most of them sell for $0.10 to $0.20. Cents. I don't know why. 151 is just crazy popular. Maybe they haven't had a big reprint yet. I don't really follow that much, but... That's kind of the feel I get when I see the prices on some of these cards. So I'll keep doing that arbitrage play until reprints come and then I'll reevaluate after the market gets flooded. I think I sold more Yu-Gi-Oh than Magic again, despite having way more Magic listed. Yu-Gi-Oh is just doing really well for me. I think it has to do with me not having listed a lot of Desirable magic cards recently though I've mainly been listing Pokemon on TCG player So a lot of the magic inventory I have left is probably just illiquid stuff But we'll see I have a lot of magic cards. I'm gonna be listing here in a little bit been sorting through those Had some really good finds like and There was this priest of Titania that's like a $6 card that I sold for $18 through direct. That's just crazy. Always make sure you check what the current direct low list is. If you're listing anything valuable, don't always just, when you're listing, match the market price. Because sometimes you can get multiples over the market price as a direct seller. It doesn't happen often, but when it does happen, it feels really nice. All right, a little bit more Yu-Gi-Oh, Commons, Dawn of Majesty. I am getting a bit more familiarized with the Yu-Gi-Oh sets. 
Honestly, I just love the art in Yu-Gi-Oh! Especially the nostalgic cards that I remember from my childhood. They do a lot of reprints. And what else do we have here? LED 9. Duels from the Deep. And just a couple Ultra Rares. I do have like thousands of Ultra Rares I need to sort through. But the thing is like a lot of them are not near mint. So I've just been lazy about condition checking everything. Condition checking thousands of holo cards is like my nightmare. I wish I could just pay someone to do that for me. It's just, it's so hard to determine, like, what is, what is LP or what is moderately played. I just, I don't want to have to deal with that. That's why I only like listing near mint cards most of the time. But there, I should extract the value. I have, like, thousands of hollow Yu-Gi-Oh cards that I could, a lot of them probably will sell as LP. There's hollows from Pokemon. But yeah, as you can see, the Pokemon non hollows just don't move. Like, only the trainers in a little bit. A few random rares here and there. I mean, that's a common, but yeah. Like, I don't even really bother listing many of the Pokemon commons and uncommons if they're not trainers anymore. I'll list, like, a little bit. If it's a set I don't have, just so I can capture more multiple quantity orders. But mainly I would just focus on hollows, reverse hollows, ultra rares. And actually not even the ultra rares so much. A lot of those I would just move in bulk lots on eBay. Though my bulk lot volume has went down drastically because I went on vacation in January. And... The eBay algorithm really favors like when a listing has traction. So if you shut down your store for a couple weeks, other sellers are gonna pretty much take your place in the algorithm. So I need a I need to find a way to get my listing going again. Part part of that was that my sales volume was just crazy high in the month of December because of people buying Christmas gifts. Like I sold something like four to five hundred 100 card lots in December Which is just crazy can't wait for Christmas time again this year. I always get a huge sale boost then but Yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this video and my rambling about What I've been doing with my store. I need to Start pumping out more YouTube comment or content again as well sun and moon reverses and hollows i love getting sun and moon and prior cards in bulk they're just they're nice to see they sell better than the modern stuff usually from you to full arts and then my celebrations misses that i didn't end up grading we just flip them back onto the market and usually I don't end up losing much on those. Some Cosmos Hollow promo type cards. And then I think these three are listed as moderately played. Because they had minor bins like that one in the corner. I don't know if that's from shipping or it was like that before they sold it to me. This one, oh yeah. This one has a bend at the bottom. Can't even really show you. And this one... Oh yeah, it has like a like a thumbprint dent there. So yeah, not bad for moderately play. Just have like some people probably won't even notice that damage. But yeah, that's it for this video. In terms of volume, Yu-Gi-Oh sold the most for us this time, followed by Magic and then Pokemon. Magic and Pokemon were pretty much equal size stacks. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Smash like button. Comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Goodbye.